Hi boys and girls, we are going to learn about the artist Bisa Butler. Bisa Butler was born in Orange, New Jersey. How many of you are living in New Jersey? <laughs> she is the youngest of four in her family, and she started her love of art very, very young. I think a lot of you can relate to that. She has always loved art. She won a sidewalk competition when she was four years old. She actually got a blue ribbon. And when she was five, she was named Artist of the Month at her nursery school. Currently, she's a Newark Public School art teacher. I like that. I think art teachers are pretty great. And she lives in West Orange, New Jersey currently. So many of you live in East Brunswick, New Jersey, and she's living in West Orange, New Jersey. So we can definitely find that in common. I hope you enjoy seeing her quilted works of art. Bisa makes quilts. Here she is standing in front of one of her works. A quilt is a blanket made from smaller pieces of fabric and they're put together in patterns. Bisa uses quilting to create portraits or pictures of people. How did Bisa decide to quilt? Well, she was taking a fiber arts class when she was an adult. Fiber arts means making art from fabric. She said, as a child, I was always watching my mother and grandmother sew, and they taught me. After that class, I made a quilt for my grandmother, and I have been quilting ever since. Here are some photos of Bisa at work. She has a very large sewing machine that is special for quilting. It might look different than a sewing machine that you've seen at home. She can use the threads to draw patterns on the fabric. Think about some of your favorite doodles, lines, or patterns that you like to draw. Maybe you will want to add those to your masterpiece. Here is Bisa in the process of creating. So she's laying out her design right now. She loves using old family photos as inspiration. She'll actually print them out and make them larger. And then she creates the images with colorful fabric. Often the older photos, they're not in color. They're called black and white. She chooses colors that express emotions or represent the people that she is creating. This is a photo of her grandmother and grandfather. She chose blue for her grandfather because he was from the Caribbean where the waters are beautiful blues. Her grandmother is represented with purple because her name was Violet. What colors make you feel certain emotions? Maybe you think of happiness when you think of warm colors like yellows and oranges and reds, like the sunshine. Maybe you think of your favorite ice cream when you think of the color brown. Start thinking about what colors make you feel. Now let's take a look at Bisa's work. This one is called Safety Patrol. Take a look at those colorful faces. That's something I really want you to notice. As you create your own works, you're going to be choosing bold colors that make you feel certain ways. Take a look behind these children. Do you notice that the background has a flower pattern or a floral pattern? You can also choose to make the background of your work have a pattern. Here's one of her works called Three Kings. Take a look again at the pattern in the background. This one isn't a floral pattern. It has orange and it has some red dots all over it. If you can see in the zoomed in picture on the right, you can see all of the different colors that Bisa used to make the man's face. What does it make you feel? Here's a piece called broom jumpers. Why would it be called broom jumpers? The reason why is because there's an African-American tradition of jumping over a broom after someone is getting married. So the couple will jump over the broom. 
This photo happens to be a photo of Bisa's grandparents after they were married. Take a look at the grandmother. She's represented with some blues and purples. You might remember earlier that I said her grandmother's name was Violet. This is Violet. Remember how I said Bisa can doodle or make patterns or lines with her threads? In this piece, Dear Mama, you can see that she's actually writing with the thread. If you look on the right, you can see the zoomed in picture. And that's cursive or script writing. And it has a message on it. You can also notice in the background that there are patterns. And take a look at those bright, bold colors. I hope you're getting inspired. Let's take a look at her work called Sunday Morning. This one's really neat because on each side, there's the same pattern, that zigzag line, but she used two different colors. Maybe that's something that you would like to do. And again, take a look at all of the bright, bold colors she's used for the faces. It's also neat here that she has some of the guys sitting or leaning, but they're not really sitting and leaning on anything that we can see. We have to use our imagination and wonder what they're sitting on and what they're leaning on. Here are some close-ups from the work Sunday morning. So you can see a lot of detail, all the different pattern fabrics she uses, and I hope that you can even see her stitches. They might be harder to see in photographs, but there's a lot of work that goes into making these masterpieces. Here is one of her works called Anai. One of the things that I really wanted you to see here is that she's actually added some bows, some real ribbons added on top. You might also be able to see the little swirly lines representing curls in the girl's hair. I hope you're thinking about some things that you can add to your masterpiece. Just like the work Anai, this work called the T also has some details that are raised. On the woman's hat, you can see that there's some fluffy fabric on the front of her hat and kind of like a veil on the back of her hat. That's actually fabric that's draped down. Maybe this is something that you would like to do with your work. Also, just like all of her other works, you can see those wonderful bright bold colors and the really cool patterns in the background. The last two works we're going to look at are called The Princess, the one on the left, and Komario Boom Shakalaka, the piece on the right. Take a look at the backgrounds of these works. The princess has stripes in the background. At the very top of the work, there's stripes that look like maybe a very dark blue and a light blue. Those almost look like a flag to me. And the green and the blue and the green and the blue moving down the piece still make that stripe effect. The cool thing about the princess, look at both of her arms. They're not the same color. Maybe that's something you'd like to do. And take a look at Komaria Boom Shakalaka. I have to say, I really love what her shirt says. Smart girls rock. Isn't that the truth? Take a look at the background of this piece. There's stars and it looks like there's fireworks. And one of the awesome things, she has a cape on. So I think she's feeling pretty powerful like a superhero, and that's awesome. Here's another photo of Bisa at work. She's laying out all of her pieces, and she's going to get ready to bring it to that big sewing machine to start putting everything together. I really hope you've enjoyed learning all about her artwork, taking a look at some of those bright, bold colors that she uses, and I hope you're feeling inspired to move on to our project. One of the things that she said that I really liked was this. She said, we are all valuable. If you're made up of a bunch of scrap, humble beginnings or simple ingredients, you can make masterpieces. I can't wait to see what you create inspired by Bisa Butler's work. And remember, enjoy and stay creative.